there. I'm Hannah Rubenstahl, the crafter here at Fanciful Spaces. If you've watched any of my videos before, uh, the background looked a lot different. We're trying something new. This disastrous background over here is part of my crafting area. It's a work in progress. I do hope to have it organized and sorted out eventually, but I never seem to get to it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the video and being part of the Finders Keepers and 3L and Read a Bear Cat blog hop. Uh, Working with their pro their products together, um, combining the, all three different companies to making one project was a lot of fun and a really great challenge. So I hope that I inspire you. I hope that you learn something. Um, if this background doesn't work for you, if you've got organizational ideas for me, um, we're broke, so I can't afford a whole lot of organizational stuff, feel free to put the stuff in the doodly do. I would look forward to hearing from you. All right, thank you so much and have a great day. Okay, to start this project, this is a sheet of 12 by 12 white cardstock that I used from cutcardstock.com. I covered the entire area with some Liquitex super heavy gesso. Um, this is heavy stuff. I knew I'd be using a lot of water in this project and I worried that my cardstock wouldn't hold up to it with the amount of water I was using. So that's why I went with a super heavy gesso instead of regular gesso. I liked this stuff. It was cool. Um, I am using a Tim Holtz stencil. Um, I don't know the name of it. It's from Stampers Anonymous. It's super cute with stars. And at first I used some grunge paste. Um, in the stencil. I learned about grunge paste at Creativation this past year and I was not very educated when I went to work on this project because it wasn't working how I expected it to be. I thought it would be a lot more fluid and liquid like a non-Newtonian liquid um, and it wasn't so don't judge the product judge the user here. I should have done more research since I used it. I switched to some the Crafters Workshop White Pearl Modeling Paste. Um, that went on beautifully, but the two different products provided a different look in the stars, which we'll see later in the video, and I really liked the dynamics that I got. So once all that was all dry, I am using some Lindy's Magical in Canna Lily Burnt Orange, um, Sweet Violet Teal and Hydrangea Blue. These are a lot like a um, uh, a color burst, for example. Here I am dabbing away some excess water because I didn't want the pool of color there, and that was a huge mistake. I really should have trusted the process because you see here the colors are so muted, and I had to go back in with more of the magical colors, um, the Canna Lily Burnt Orange. I'm really disappointed in the final project. Just in that, you can't see a lot of that orange in the final project. There's a few spots here and there where you can see the orange pop through, and I really love those spots. So I wish I hadn't wiped so much of the stuff away. Live and learn. Um, I wasn't getting the coverage that I wanted, uh, so I went ahead and used my fingers. And while I was using my fingers, I was remembering this time in theater school. It was my first semester evaluation ever. And I'm sitting there and one of my instructors is saying, Hannah, your enthusiasm in your work is really, really great. However, you need to learn that some things aren't safe to use with your hands. You need to start wearing gloves more frequently. The hysterical part of that story was about an hour before that mid-semester evaluation, I had put my thumb on a red hot weld. So I'm sitting there in the class in this evaluation, dying of pain, with pain shooting down the entire right-hand side of my body, trying to pretend that I am fine because I was terrified of this evaluation and scared that I'd get kicked out of the um, program. So it just was a funny aside that made me think about that story. Um, here I am splashing some uh, denatured, sorry, not denatured alcohol, some rubbing alcohol onto my project. It um, acts as a resist to the water and it pushes the water away. And since the pigment is captured in that water, it's pushing the pigment away, leaving really organic pools of color behind. It's one of my favorite techniques. We did it in theater school a lot, especially when we were painting things like marble. Um, I really 
enjoy using denatured alcohol in my projects. You should not denatured alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Um, in theater, we use denatured alcohol in giant like gallon containers. And now I buy my rubbing alcohol at the drugstore. Um, they do the same process in the painting. So I apologize if I'm confusing you. Um, it's like magic when you're watching it go on. Um, I hope you enjoyed that bit there where I slowed it down slightly so you could just see how pretty and organic it is. Um, we're coming up here to where you notice the difference between the white pearl modeling paste by the Crafters Workshop and the grunge paste. The grunge paste didn't hold the star's form as well as the white pearl modeling paste. The white pearl modeling paste like was like plastic. You saw the definition and the lines of the stars. And I really appreciated it in this project, the dynamic. It added a different layer to the overall project feel. But you should know about that going into your project because you might want one look and you might want another look. Um. I see before I added the black ink around the edges, I sealed my project off with some spray varnish because I didn't want any of my pigments to move. And I also wanted to deepen, um, bring back the life to those colors that you get when something is wet. Um, that created several problems because, um, because some adhesives didn't want to stick to that surface and the ink that I'm spreading on now didn't want to stick to that surface. So I had to futz with it. Um, I had to play around with some different adhesives, um, all from, from, um, scrapbook adhesives. Sorry for the brain fart there, but, um, it's just something to know going forward. So this is one of the scrapbook pages from Finders Keepers. I loved this little girl sitting in the corner reading her book and you can see the, the imagination that the book is giving her. And I had originally intended to cut out the text space and leave the black space. I was gonna keep the black space and layer that on top of my images um, using the text space as a um, negative space. I ended up cutting it down because it blocked too much of my background paper that I used. Um, so I just ended up using a part of it. Using an X-Acto knife and tracing out the black edges worked a lot, worked really well for me to know what I was cutting and what I wasn't. Here I am using Rita Bearcat's Magical Mysteries embossing powders. The first one is a base, Fairy Wings. It doesn't show up gray like it did before. I had previously used that stamp on some black ink and tried to get as much off as I could. And now I'm using Fairy Wings Purple to give it the purple color. You just heat up the base, sprinkle the purple on, and then heat that again. And you can repeat this process as many times until you get the colors that you want. The stamp that I used was from Art Foamies. It says, I'm a dream chaser. It's one of Rita's designs. Um, these stamps are really great, not only in paper crafting, but a lot of other mixed media projects like canvas and fabric and stuff like that. They're really, they've got a lot of uses to them. I like them. So I'm taking some of the Lindy's Starburst sprays in some of the same colors that I used earlier, Hydrangea Blue and Sweet Violet Purple Teal. And I am spraying it on some wood enamel, not enamel, some wood stars that I have. I also sprayed it on some ribbon as well, which we'll be using later in the project. I set those aside, let them dry. This is some more adhesive, I think I threw away the wrapper. Um, I'll link it in the doodly do. All of the stuff will be linked in the doodly do. Um, I really liked this tape. I wasn't entirely sure of it, and I ended up really liking it. it tears really easily. Um, so the reason why I am double layering my card is because uh there was a lot going on on my front piece of cardstock, and I worried that it would be flimsy and not hold up if it shifted around ever in scrapbook pages. And because I can't line things up perfectly like ever, I am just really carefully taking my scissors and trimming the the bottom layer of the cardstock that you'll never see, um, just to hide where areas overlapped and whatnot. 
So this is 3D Foam Creative Sheets by Scrapbook Adhesives. It comes in six inches by 12 inches. So you could do half of a cardstock or of a 12 by 12 sheet. And what I'm doing is I'm outlining, I reversed my image that I had cut out and I'm outlining the girl that I want popped up off of the thing. Um, you don't have to draw on it. You can just indent. So I was using a mechanical and pen pencil without any lead. And here I am trying to cut inside the line so that you won't see the foam adhesive. Um, there were areas where I failed at it because it's hard to cut detailed curves with this foam adhesive. So here I am just going through and trimming out any areas that might peek through. You'll see in a second that I eventually call it close enough and I tape my piece down and then I can go in and trim it again. Um, <laughs> you're going to see here really soon. I accidentally dropped my piece of paper onto the adhesive face side down and was like, oh my geez, this is so scary. How am I going to have to recut out from another sheet of paper that I have? Awesomely, the cardstock with some gentle peeling pulled up off of these 3D foam sheets without marking the cardstock at all. You will never know that it fell face down. So I love this foam adhesive because it sticks when you want it to stick, but you have some time to futz with it and fix it and pull that sucker off like you see I just did there. So I'm taping it down, um, trimming off those extra places, and I am going to adhere that on my cardstock. <clears throat> Excuse me. The photo of my daughter is going to go underneath it, but since I don't know specifically where this is going to lie, I decided to weigh and pull up some of this off of my cardstock and slip that photo underneath. So, um... Yeah, that proved to be a little bit more difficult because this stuff really wanted to adhere. But in the end, I got my photo generally exactly where I want it to be, and I was really, really happy. I'm just building up some of the areas here because I don't want, over time, the paper to warp or to dent or to break. So just taking in some of those remnant pieces of the creative sheets, the foam sheets, and sticking them in. Save all of your remnant pieces. You never know when it's going to come in handy. Even those little teeny pieces, they are really useful in a lot of locations. So you see, I have some play time. I could stick it and lay it down exactly how I want. For the most part, I didn't notice the very bottom edge is not lined up perfectly. Um, I went through with a black marker and to darken that area. And then I went through with a Sharpie and you will never notice in a, in a sheet, a plastic um, scrapbooking sheet, you'll never ever notice that um, I wasn't exact on it. Um, and here I am just placing things. Some things are layering on top of the foam. So obviously I have to put foam on top of underneath them. And where they're, where the pieces I want flush with the foam scrapbook page piece, I'm using the ultra permanent easy runner by scrapbook adhesives so that the whole area has some form of adhesive on it. And where my panels overlap, I'm going to just trim that off in a second. Uh, the panel on the bottom left, I asked my seven-year-old daughter, because this is a picture of her, I asked her to write what she was doing. The image isn't the best quality image. You can't see my daughter. You can't see the dog that she's reading to. By the way, she's reading to a puppy dog. It's a it's a therapy program that the library has to help support reading. Um, and the purpose of this page is not to document my beautiful daughter. It's to document this amazing experience that she had that she was so excited about. She was every single day leading up to it. When can I read to puppy dogs? When can I read to puppy dogs? So when my husband and I look at the scrapbook page, we're going to remember the when can I look at puppy dogs moment and see her engrossed in petting this dog. She's reading a book about wolves and just loving the experience and 
for me, that speaks more to me than a cute picture of my daughter. Trust me. I scrapbooked those too, but this one I just wanted to capture the memory um, of her in action reading to the puppy dog. She said she scribbled out in some places on the thing. And I said, that's part of the charm, Buggy. I want that. You're seven. I want to capture the seven-year-old you. So that is my scrapbook page. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Please make sure to like and subscribe to my channel if I interested you. And make sure to continue on the blog hop and follow everybody else. There's a lot of inspiration. All right. Thank you so much. And I hope you're having a great day.